The adrenal glands and the pancreas are among the most vital organs of the endocrine system. The human body contains two adrenal glands. Each is located on top of a kidney. The adrenal gland is made up of two regions, the inner adrenal medulla and the outer adrenal cortex. The adrenal cortex consists of three zones. The outermost zone is the zona glomerulosa. Beneath the zona glomerulosa is the zona fasciculata. The zone closest to the adrenal medulla is the zona reticularis. The pancreas is a leaf-shaped gland which is located behind the stomach. The wide region of the pancreas, which is close to the duodenum, is called the pancreatic head. The narrow tapering region extending towards the left is the pancreatic tail. The head of the pancreas is connected to the duodenum via the pancreatic duct. The pancreatic acinar cells are exocrine cells that secrete digestive juices into the pancreatic duct. The juices are then carried to the duodenum where they help in the digestion of food. The islets of Langerhans are the endocrine cells of the pancreas. The Langerhans cells are of two types, alpha cells and beta cells. The different regions of the adrenal gland secrete different hormones. The adrenal medulla, which is the core of the adrenal gland, secretes hormones, adrenaline and noradrenaline. These hormones are also called epinephrine and norepinephrine, respectively. Hormones of the adrenal medulla are catecholamines. They are hormones of the fight-or-flight response. Do you know what fight-and-flight responses are? They are aggressive responses that a person gives in emergency situations. Whenever the body encounters any emergency, the nervous system sends signals to the adrenal medulla to secrete catecholamines. In the liver, these catecholamines increase the rate of conversion of glycogen, fats and proteins into glucose. By doing so, catecholamine hormones increase blood glucose concentration, which helps the person in responding to emergencies. Catecholamines cause increase in heart rates, dilation of the pupil, sweating and piloerection, which is erection of skin hair. All the hormones secreted by the different zones of the adrenal cortex are collectively called corticoids or corticosteroids. The outermost layer of the cortex, the zona glomerulosa, secretes mineralocorticoids such as aldosterone. Aldosterone maintains the water electrolyte balance in the body. In the kidneys, aldosterone increases the reabsorption of sodium and water and the elimination of potassium in urine. The middle zone, the zona fasciculata, secretes glucocorticoids which play a role in glucose metabolism. Glucocorticoids stimulate lipolysis and proteolysis and convert free fatty acids and amino acids to glucose. This process of glucose formation is called gluconeogenesis. Glucocorticoids are known to suppress immune responses. This prevents damage to cells caused by hypersensitivity reactions of the immune system. Did you know that inhaling devices used by asthma patients contain glucocorticoids? Asthma is an allergic syndrome arising from hypersensitivity reactions of the immune system. The innermost layer of the adrenal cortex, the zona reticularis, secretes adrenal androgens which regulate the development of sex organs and secondary sexual characteristics in males. The islets of Langerhans, which are the endocrine cells of the pancreas, secrete two hormones. The alpha cells secrete the hormone glucagon and the beta cells secrete the hormone insulin. The hormone glucagon released by the alpha cells of the pancreas is a hyperglycemic hormone. That is, its action increases the levels of blood glucose. 
glucagon acts on the liver and breaks down glycogen stored in the liver to release glucose units into the blood. This is called glycogenolysis. Simultaneously, glucagon also favors the process of gluconeogenesis, that is, the production of glucose from non-carbohydrate moieties, such as proteins and fats. It reduces the uptake of glucose by the cells, thus maintaining high glucose levels in the blood. Remember that catecholamines, secreted from the adrenal medulla, also increase blood glucose levels. However, they do so only to prepare the body for physical activity during stress. Catecholamines show other physiological effects too. They increase the heart rate and blood pressure, whereas glucagon solely aims at maintaining blood glucose levels in the body. Exactly converse is the action of the hormone insulin, which is a hypoglycemic hormone. Its function is to lower blood glucose. In the liver, insulin stimulates the conversion of glucose into glycogen. This process is called glycogenesis. In the adipose tissue, insulin stimulates the conversion of glucose into fats. Hormone insulin maintains low blood glucose levels as it encourages glucose uptake by the cells. Thus, both these hormones of the pancreas play a major role in maintaining blood glucose homeostasis within the body. Increased or decreased secretion of adrenal and pancreatic hormones may cause some severe diseases that need medical intervention. Hyposecretion or reduced secretion of corticosteroids, especially glucocorticoids, causes Addison's disease. Common symptoms of Addison's disease are nausea and vomiting, dizziness on standing, muscle weakness and dark tanning of skin. Hyposecretion of corticosteroids, especially glucocorticoids, causes Cushing's syndrome. Common symptoms of Cushing's syndrome are weight gain, especially on the face, forming a moon face, bruising of skin, excessive hair growth on face and neck, and menstrual disorders in women. A decrease in synthesis of the hormone insulin causes a very common clinical condition, diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus is characterized by an escalation in blood glucose levels due to the loss of insulin's hypoglycemic effect. Common symptoms of diabetes mellitus include frequent urination or polyuria, excessive thirst or polydipsia, excessive hunger or polyphagia, and poor wound healing. In spite of having high blood glucose levels, do you know why diabetic patients feel hungry? That is because, as there is less insulin, the glucose present in the blood is unable to enter the cells. All cells in the body thus remain energy-deprived. These energy-deprived cells send hunger signals to the brain. However, excess eating is never the solution. It only aggravates the situation by making blood glucose levels shoot up. Diabetic patients with high blood glucose levels are therefore administered insulin that stimulates glucose uptake by cells and thus decreases blood glucose levels. Diabetic patients also need to take necessary precautions such as regular exercise, cutting down sugar intake and adopting better dietary practices so as to combat this serious disease. <laughs>